Charles Mass, Director of President Lincoln's Cottage, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our final cottage conversation of the season. Immediately following tonight's talk, we'll have a brief question and answer, as usual, in the Lincoln Library. Also, I wanted to mention that if you missed CCM's Monday night program on Mary Lincoln, the latest installment of their First Lady series, I encourage you to tune in on Saturday evening at 7 p.m., and Mary's time here at the cottage is one of the program highlights. Some of you have already seen that. I about that Tonight, we're pleased to welcome the Honorable Frank J. Williams, former Chief Justice of the Rhode Island Supreme Court, founding chair of the Lincoln Forum, and one of the nation's most prominent authorities, collectors, and leaders in the Lincoln field. We are pleased to display items from Judge Williams' collection a few years ago as part of his special exhibit on private collections of Lincoln, Indiana. He served for 14 years as president of the Lincoln Group of Boston and for nine as president of the Abraham Lincoln Association. He is also a member of the board of directors of the U.S. Abraham Lincoln Bicentennial Foundation. He is a popular lecturer, the editor of many works, and the author of over a dozen books. Williams co-authored the Emancipation Proclamation Three Views with Harold Holzer and Edna Green Medford and joined, them, joined his co-authors as a featured speaker at our event last year commemorating the 150th anniversary of DC emancipation. Judge Williams is currently at work on an annotated bibliography of all the Lincoln titles published since 1865 for Fordham University Press. It's an intensive project. Tonight, the Chief will be discussing the Mary Lincoln Enigma, which he co-edited. Published last June, the Mary Lincoln Enigma includes 13 diverse and informative essays from leading experts on arguably the most controversial first lady in American history. Many of the contributors to the Mary Lincoln Enigma, including Harold Holzer, Catherine Clinton, and Douglas Wilson, are amongst our closest advisors and past Cottage Conversation speakers. To this day, Mary Lincoln has her defenders and her accusers. As this book suggests, the divide is as sharp as ever, but more than that, Judge Williams has created a piece that illustrates from many perspectives why Mary Lincoln is worthy of our attention. Please join me in welcoming Mary Lincoln. Thank you very much, Erin, and thank you and Callie and your entire crew here for making President Lincoln's Cottage, such a great experience for people who come. It's one of my favorite places uh, in Washington. It's good to be back. We had a great time with great weather at DC Emancipation Day <laughs> last April. And it's good to have all of you here tonight, this beautiful night. Thanks for coming out for this conversation. And I hope you will ask hard questions because Mary Lincoln, as Aaron indicated, remains uh, controversial. And few historical figures have created such a wide disparity in interpretation as Mary Lincoln. In the most extreme viewpoints, she has been portrayed as almost demonic, a violent and corrupt shrew that made Abraham Lincoln's life a living hell, at the same time, others have portrayed her as a loving and affectionate wife, a great mother, and a brilliant political partner for her husband. Some say her uh, posthumous reputation has suffered due to the sexism and bias of male historians. Others say her own behavior is the cause of her poor historical reputation, adding that blaming historians is at best misguided. With all of the recent work and increased attention on Abraham Lincoln, and I must say vicariously married because of Steven Spielberg's biopic, it's really the Lincoln Spring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about Lincoln, and that's fine with me. And, and as an aside, I thought of Sally Field, who portrayed Mary Lincoln in, in the Spielberg, Lincoln was magisterial. She worked hard to get the role, she worked hard to portray this controversial figure. We saw many sides of her, some of which I will discuss this evening in the 30 or so minutes that I have and that are really discussed in the, in the Mary Lincoln Enigma book that Aaron just, just mentioned. There is a passage of time and the insights that advance the study of uh, women's history and psychohistory 
I think with that we can now move beyond simplistic interpretations of one of the most famous first ladies. Well, who was the real Mary Lincoln? The question is still very much open. Today's historians, I think, should continue to resolve it. She deserves a more nuanced picture than the caricatures given by both apologists and critics heretofore. Now, you don't have to be a judge or a lawyer. I see some of my lawyer friends in the audience tonight, to know that every one of us human beings is multifaceted, isn't that right? And we have all these layers, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And when we look in the mirror to shave or put on your makeup every morning, there is a, there is a vision of what we have been and what we are at that moment. And I think you can relate that to Mary Lincoln who was this character with the multi-layers exponentially greater than many. Of course, she was a public figure, just, just as her um, beloved husband was. Well, the book explores this enigma, all the multi-layers that I just mentioned, by gathering a number of scholars. Aaron mentioned some of them, and I'll mention some of them in my, in my brief synopsis of the book. And they approach Mary from different perspectives. Each focuses on one controversial aspect of her life, including her relationship with her siblings and parents, her often tempestuous courtship and marriage with Abraham Lincoln, her political opinions and her influence on her husband's political career, her relationship with her son Robert, her relationship with slaves and slavery, and her insanity trial among other topics. The essays provide the reader with new ways to examine her life and memory, and I think help solve, but you be the judge of that, help solve the mysteries that continue to surround her. For better or worse, Mary Lincoln was a very influential figure during the Civil War, <clears throat> an undertaking that seeks to understand her as a real person acting in actual time provides an additional key, we believe, in understanding mid-19th century America and its greatest leader, Abraham Lincoln. Well, we know, don't we, that with rare exception of persons like Eleanor Roosevelt and Jacqueline Kennedy, first ladies have for the most part remained invisible to the public and to historians, relegated to some private inner sphere of domesticity and the family circle. Mary Lincoln, a bright, well-educated, and ambitious young woman, was born in Rio in the first half of the 19th century when women, right, were expected to be pious and pure, submissive, and confined to the home. Well, beginning in early childhood, Mary failed to conform completely to the roles expected of her. She loved parties and elaborate clothing, and she thoroughly enjoyed exercising her wit, especially in the forbidden, for women, realm of politics. And when she married Abraham Lincoln, she determined to be an active part of his political career. As a result, harsh criticism followed her throughout her life, persisting even into contemporary times. Tragedy followed her, too leaving her vulnerable to the seduction of the spiritualist movement and to the machinations, some would say, of her eldest son who had her committed to an insane asylum. History's portrait of Mary Lincoln is rarely flattering, yet within it lies the intelligent and resourceful woman, often foolish, sometimes courageous, unquestionably devoted, who recognized the potential, didn't she? in an uncultured, post-frontier lawyer and politician. Her refusal to live her life on any but her own terms seems very modern in her day and our day. And for that alone, her life deserves our attention. One of the chapters is in, in our book 
uh, edited with Mike Berkheimer. It was our idea to come together with these other scholars to present a more objective view uh, of Mary, even though, as you will see by reading the book and from my comments, not all of the scholars agree with each other about the real Mary Lincoln. But Stephen Berry, who's an expert on the Todd family of Lexington and has done a great book about them, meaning Mary and her uh, hot brothers and sisters and her own uh, parents and stepmother, talks about the neglected <coughs> childhood and adult relationship that she had with her parents, brothers, and sisters. According to uh, Steve's book, he cites a cousin which mentions that the Todds were a large family of boys and girls who jested much and seized on the slightest pretext to tease each other unmercifully. In the Todd family, no quarter was given or sought. In other words, there a lot of bullying going on here. <laughs> and for Mary to defend herself from this kind of conflict with her siblings, she developed this, what has been called a tongue cut like a Damascus blade. <laughs> <laughs> Volatility and lashing wits were part of a common bond and she excelled in that and never forgot to use it either, sometimes too much. Mary's siblings benefited from her, suffered it by her and with her. They were there at the beginning and there at the end in ways that no one, not even her husband, could be. The second chapter by Brian Dirk, Mary Lincoln, Race and Slavery, discusses Mary's encounters with slavery and African Americans as a young woman in Kentucky. In particular, her relationship with Mammy Sally, an African American slave in the Todd household who provided Mary with crucial emotional support and influenced Mary's lifelong negative views about slavery. She was remarkably comfortable around African Americans, both as a child and an adult, and she was an early advocate of emancipation during the Civil War. Some of you remember seeing this in the dialogue between her and her husband at the time he was pressing for adoption of the resolution to send the 13th Amendment to the states. She married the only man who ever filled her lonely heart, Abraham Lincoln. After they married, what was life like in their home? Richard Lawrence Miller, in his life at 8th and Jackson, attempts to show that the Springfield, Illinois years for Abraham and Mary were warm and affectionate. He recalls playful interactions among husband, wife, and children, as well as with neighbors demonstrating an intimate power life with relatives and friends. Reports of an unhappy and tumultuous marriage during the Springfield years are questioned and some of our other authors do uh, believe that they were tumultuous, unlike uh, this author. In the end, she would lose them all, wouldn't she? Eddie and Willie and Tad to disease, her husband to assassination, and her eldest son, Robert, allegedly to greed. In an unlikely profession, Mary Lincoln's preparation for greatness Kenneth Winkle discusses Mary Lincoln as a woman of extremes. <clears throat> Her reputation ran the, the gamut from that of the love of Abraham Lincoln's life, his greatest supporter and confidant, and an elegant hostess and gracious matriarch, to a shrewish and headstrong wife and mother, a profligate spendthrift of both private and public funds, and a secret sympathizer with slavery and even an a better of the Confederate cause. Historical depictions of her tend toward either extreme as well, and both biographers and the general public hold more disparate opinions of her influence on her husband than on possibly any other subject within the scope of Lincoln scholarship.